You know how we do when we have funky music in our ear. We get to right to ain't no fighting, we just in there trying to win. Ooh, yeah, la-di-da, we grinding hard. Ooh, yeah, we not gonna stop. Turn back now. I got work to do on a mission by my business. I'm pushing through. We're back once again. I'm Nicholas Sauceman Holiday here with Antoine Jackson here. And this is the thank you letter of the week. So this week, the thank you letter goes from Alabama and TCU to Texas AM. Do you know why? They get the they get the thank you letter of the week due to the fact that Texas AM went to Auburn. And they were a 21-point underdog, which is three touchdowns. 22. 21, three touchdowns, and I don't know where they're going to get the other point from. But basically a lot of points. Half a safety. Half a safety. You cannot have half a safety. <laughs> but they said a 22-point underdog. They go to Auburn, win the game. Auburn had two fumbles it was within the red zone, which is ironic because that's the way they beat Ole Miss. The week before that, Ole Miss had two fumbles inside the five. Auburn drops the ball, get not out of the playoff contention, and thus opening the door for Alabama and opening the door for TCU and also raising the eyebrows of other teams across across the country for hope. All you need is hope. And right now, Texas A&M has given a few teams some hope right now. You know what? Over the last two seasons, Auburn has been the luckiest team yeah. I have ever seen yeah. in all of my history of watching football. They've gotten some of the craziest breaks. Think about the game against Ole Miss. You know, who who would have thought that Laquan Treadwell will break his leg and dislocate his ankle right before crossing the goal line the for the way. winning touchdown? You, some, of the, some of the plays Auburn has been involved in to win the games, you will not see within. You probably would not even see that in your football lifetime. The, t- the tip against Georgia. Hail Mary last year. The 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 um missed field goal return for a touchdown against Alabama in the Iron Bowl. For the touchdown. To win the game. These are plays that don't ever really happen. This has happened three different times with this team. So maybe finding things kind of caught up with them, maybe. I don't know. Maybe people are starting to figure out what's going on with Gus a little bit. Where well, they need to just probably start winning some games. We're not saying they haven't just won the games regular now. But some of those things is what we call fluke or very ironic. Those things have happened at those those particular times at that. Right at the end of the game, no time left on the clock. You get your Hail Mary, you run a kickoff back, and the kid fumbles twice within the five yard line. But you know what? You gotta give you gotta give kudos to Texas A and M. They came out there, they fought hard, they played tough with that team, they got physical with them at the line of scrimmage. And you know what? Even though he fumbled the ball, the center fumbled the ball, maybe he had a little thought in the back of his head. Okay, this defensive tackle is hitting me in my mouth every time I snap the ball. Got a little jittery. Yeah. Snapped the ball early. Well, anytime you run the type of offense that Auburn runs, multiple, at fast pace, hiking, hiking, after a while your hands get a little sweaty, you know, you know, I don't know. You know, but you, when you're handling the ball that much, center between center and quarterback exchanges, you run this – not a complex offense, but it's a lot of moving around, hand motion going on. Sometimes you're gonna run a thousand plays. Sometimes you're gonna that happens with the it's it's within the gets in the game, it's in the game. You're doing it so many times, it's gonna happen eventually. I hate to say it like that, but hey, that's just how the game go. Cause Malzahn typically has his offenses prepared. He's a really, really, really good coach. But you know what? Their defense has been really, really bad this year. His defense has always been kind of suspect. He's always been getting away with a high scoring offense. Suspect defense where with Auburn, they 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 get off they get after you now, but you know, he's been getting away getting away with maybe a I wouldn't say one of the more top notch defense not used not an Auburn defense that I'm used to seeing like No, not at all. Not, not at all. missing a lot of tackles. I'm not really used to seeing an Auburn defense where guys are missing tackles like that. Nick Fairley's not there anymore. No Nick Fairley. Nick Fairley's in the NFL. No, no Carlos Rogers, anybody like that. So I'm not used to seeing Auburn miss that many tackles on defense. So that's a little odd. And the last couple years, they've been getting a little sloppy as far as not wrapping up, not getting to the traditional wrapping up fundamental fundamentally hits. 
The team they lost to Alabama beat those guys 59-0. And that's why Alabama has written this thank you letter along with TCU yeah. to Texas A&M for knocking Auburn off and opening that door for them to slide into that 14 playoff. Does Auburn beat Alabama this year? No. Alabama beats Auburn this year and Alabama probably beats Mississippi State. What happens if Auburn does find a way to beat Alabama? They probably would. Chaos. Yeah. SEC West chaos. Duck your head, get under the table. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Alabama's going crazy. We already know they have rabbit fans out there that ride and doubt the team, literally die. Well, the scary thing is, if Auburn doesn't lose any more games, they finish the season with two losses. I mean, that's not a bad season. That's not a bad team. They've been to the national championship. They only have really one Super Bowl left, the Iron Bowl. You know, if they can knock off Alabama, that's a dangerous game. And ruin the SEC That's a, because um, because if they can beat Alabama, that'll give Alabama what? Two, that'll give Alabama, that'll two, give Alabama two, two losses. In the conference. And that'll leave Mississippi State is undefeated. So even if Alabama beats them and they lose, Mississippi State will probably still oh, be yeah. in the 14 playoffs. But some people think that Mississippi State may lose twice to Ole Miss and maybe Alabama anyway. Chaos. Chaos. I don't know Mississippi State. Can Ole Miss beat them without Laquan Treadwell? I don't know. It's going to be tough. He was definitely one of their best players. Great receiver. We still send our prayers out to him. Yeah. You know, and his family and everything. Hopefully, that he, hopefully he recovers quickly, gets back on his feet, and he's able to resume his career. Yeah, one of the things was I didn't know if Ole Miss had a lot of weapons already, even with Treadwell. So, with them leaving Treadwell, not saying they don't have anybody, but I don't know. It's kind of hard for me to get a pulse on that team. They're a little blend. They put up points against Auburn, but Auburn hasn't been known to make tackles traditional like that they're used to. So I don't really know about Ole Miss right now. I don't know if they can beat Mississippi State. It's a rivalry game, maybe. Who won that game last year? Which one? Mississippi State, Ole Miss. Who won that? Mississippi State, Ole Miss. Who knows? We got to look it up. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's somewhere in Mississippi. They were fighting in Mississippi. You know how that goes. They, they haven't had their teams ranked this high. Since, ever since, because the Columbus time. came yeah. over here and kicked the Native Americans since off. Since they their started land. playing football, that, at all, they've never been right there. Not both, not both teams in the state of Mississippi. Not even one. So I never seen one in the top ten. So they, they jump let alone five, let alone one. But you know what? It looks like Ole Miss is on the upswing, and it looks like after this year, Mississippi State's gonna kind of plateau and go back down a nah, little bit because they're losing a lot of players. Nah, Mississippi State rate right them. I never thought I'd ever see Mississippi State right number one. You know, when you when you build that team up and you get a bunch of those upperclassmen in there, juniors and seniors, you have a chance for a special team. They're definitely not recruiting on the elite level. Ole Miss is recruiting on the elite level. So uh, apparently Mississippi State is too. Those guys getting that strength and conditioning program, they get big. They over three, four, five years, they put that work in. They get there. Put in that work. You gotta put that work in now. Definitely. But. You know, that's the thank you letter. Once again, the thank you letter goes from Alabama and TCU to Texas A&M for beating all. Okay, so what's one thing that's keeping you guys real focused this year? I think that uh, last year, from playing last year, we know what we need to work on this year. So that's been like our main priority this year. In practice and every day, we just work hard and we know what we want, the end goal. So we just kind of give it all we got. Um, I'd say last year we had a lot more seniors. So, you know, not much has changed because our team dynamic is sort of the same. Yeah. But, you know, we got to come out here and fix, all, fix the things that we didn't do last year in order to be better this year. We have a lot of the same core players, so now we're used to playing with each other and we feel more comfortable and we have like a good core group. So we played Concordia and we had like a big mental block against them, which is something that's different from this year because we finally beat them and overcame it. So now we're just ready to play whoever and we want that ring. Yeah, yeah, we want that ring. Between the Classes Magazine. Nicholas Austin Holiday. So we're here to talk about these top four picks for the playoffs right now. Right now, currently my four picks, and this is before Saturday. Now, next week we should have a different four. 
But right now, for the four, I have Oregon, Alabama, Mississippi State, which I'm st I'm still kind of not sold on them like that. I don't know, maybe I'm going, because they're the number one team in the country, I'm putting them in there. I don't know if they're real like that. I like their quarterback, but the pass defense is suspect. And, you know, I'm going to go with, I kind of like, I like Baylor a little bit, but they say I can't put Baylor in there right now. So, I don't know what's that, Oregon, Auburn, no, Oregon, Alabama, Mississippi State, and TCU. And I like Baylor, but, I mean, Baylor beat TCU, but they had to come back. But, um, the TCU defense is physical now. As far as my top four picks go, and the committee's top four picks, who both have Florida State in there. I know you don't want to say Florida State, but think about it. The committee's picks right now are Mississippi State. Florida State was actually jumped by Oregon, so they have Oregon at number two, Florida State at number three, and TCU, num TCU at number four. Now, that's not too different from what I had because I actually have Mississippi State. I still have Florida State at number two, and I have Oregon at number three, and TCU at number four. Well, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, and I don't want to pick on Mississippi State or anything, and, you know, not, not, one thing I think Florida State is for real. They are legit. Everybody's finding a reason to jump the guys, but come on, I do. How many teams can lose this many team players off a team and still battle in the top two, top three? Maybe still should be one, honestly. Because, like I said, Mississippi State pass defense is very suspect to me. However, you know, they, they beat Auburn. But, you know, I was never really too sold on Auburn. Me personally, like we just discussed, they won a lot of games between this year and last year. Somebody's going to church quite a bit. Sundays, Sunday school included. It's a lot of going on, maybe Bible study Wednesdays as well. But somebody was going to Auburn quite a bit, going to church quite a bit. But as far as, you know, the talent that's out there right now, you know, I, I think if Mississippi State loses, they probably won't drop a far. Well, depending on how they lose. Now, if they win, now they got to go in for the most part. But if they lose, you know, I could see them losing twice and then maybe that, somebody else sliding in that other spot. You, know, you still have the Big Ten trying to want they want they dying to send in their Big Ten representative in there. You know the Big Twelve is dying to get somebody in there, which right now they're looking pretty good for that. Oh, most definitely. Uh, Pac Twelve, you know they want to have parity, and the SEC is right now they don't beat each other to death over there. They got they got to have one school, so they need Alabama to win right now. They need Mississippi. They need somebody to win because. The SEC, could they not have any teams in the playoffs? Mississippi State loses to Alabama and Ole Miss because they still had an egg bowl at the end of the year. Yeah, take them out. And if, you know, right now Alabama's sitting on one loss. What if they lose to Auburn? Alabama can lose to Auburn. You take them out. In the Iron Bowl, so that's two losses for Alabama. That'll be two, two losses, losses for Auburn, two Mississippi losses. State. Two losses. And Ole Miss because Ole Miss already has the two losses. Sitting at two L's. It's possible that could happen, but you know what? The I, SEC will find a way to get there. Would I don't they, know if they would allow it. They wouldn't even let it go. Don't, don't forget, right. not too long ago, we had to watch an SEC championship rematch in the national championship of Alabama and LSU, where Alabama they skunked, skunked LSU, which was horrible. Then what happened also, though, what if they said an SEC representative goes to the SEC championship game, but Georgia knock them off? They'll lose their mind. Craziness. That would be madness. Craziness. Especially everybody thinks that the SEC West is it's the so best conference in the history of the world. If Georgia or somebody going there and take that, that'll be... Georgia, Missouri. If that, still if, running if, in the East also. If, if that happens, you have to put Ohio State in the, in the 14 playoff. And if you pop out a, a final 14 playoff with, a, let's say, Ohio State, TCU... Oregon and Florida State, the, the world's going to go crazy. The SEC country is going to go crazy. They would lose it. They would, lose, they would demand schedules. They would pull up. They would pull up everything. They he, would lose their mind. Somebody's getting their juvenile records pulled up and posted on the internet if that happens. If that oh. happens, which could happen. Which could happen. I hope Condoleezza Rice doesn't have a juvenile don't, record. Don't think, I mean, Georgia still, I think, is the front runner to come out of the SEC East. You're going to get your full dose of Todd Gurley in the SEC Championship game. And Missouri still in the running in the East also? I don't, I don't want to see Missouri in 
No, no, they, I don't think they have a chance against anybody in the West. Georgia beat them 37-0. They don't have a chance Georgia against Georgia is the best team in the SEC. But Trion, with Florida, I think Florida with Trion Harris is the best team in the SEC East. But I don't know what Munchunt was thinking to not have this kid playing at this soon, but it's costing him right now. It really is hurting the team long run because now they're looking at Georgia being there. They're thinking to myself, we blow that team out. But well, they didn't have Gurley now, and they didn't have Sonny. But Georgia was still rolling with Chubb at the helm now. If Florida comes out of the SEC East, no, they're not coming. And they and they mess around and play Alabama again, and I have, I get to see the greatest whooping I've ever seen a team put on Florida in my lifetime. I don't want to see that. I don't know if Florida can come out. Of, I think the hole is too deep. The it, SEC Alabama East. put up over six hundred yards of offense on them. I, I, I heard. I heard the game was close at first though. And this was at Driscoll with the helm. This is not true. Don't hell. forget, the game was close because Alabama had a bunch of turnovers. That's the Florida what, defense, what, though. Without those turnovers, that might have been the greatest. Florida defenses, if they, they, all, they have a defense now. Without those turnovers, Alabama could have put 70 points up on Florida. Yeah, they, got a, they got defense. It's not, they got hard grades. They got Fowler. They got defense. And don't forget, in that second half, Amari Cooper went off on his well, he's oh, Mark Cooper went off on the secondary in the first half, but that's what, second I, half, what I was told. Now I don't, I didn't see the game. Oh. I heard it was some zone coverage and Mari, Amari just streaked. Oh, I, I, I don't know. know. I didn't see it. I don't know. I don't know what it is. If that safety had his eyes in the backfield, yeah, but Mark yeah, Cooper yeah. shot past them a couple yeah, of times, yeah, a couple of times, untouched. But you know what? That's our that's our two playoff selection. We'll see how things play out. They're going to be releasing the rankings every Tuesday, and we'll be talking about them every Tuesday evening also. You know how we do it, we have funky music in our ear We get to rock, to ain't no fight till we just in there trying to win Ooh yeah, la we grinding hard Ooh yeah, we not gonna stop Yeah, 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 yeah Too late to turn back now I got work to do on a mission, by my business, I'm pushing through, I'm pushing through, no slacking, make it happen, we grinding, we grinding hard, we grinding hard. You know how we do it, we have funky music in our ear We get to rock to ain't no fight till we just in there trying to win Ooh yeah, la di la, we grinding hard Ooh yeah, we not gonna stop Yeah, 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 yeah Too late to turn back now I got work to do on a mission, by my business, I'm pushing through, I'm pushing through, no slacking, make it happen, we grinding, we grinding hard, we grinding hard. You know how we do it, we have funky music in our ear We get to rock to ain't no fight till we just in there trying to win Ooh yeah, la di la, we grinding hard Ooh yeah, we not gonna stop Yeah, 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 yeah Too late to turn back now I got work to do on a mission, by my business, I'm pushing through, I'm pushing through.